Do you want to know how to paint this painting? Stay tuned, you obviously do, otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on this. Thank you, London. That was an amazing intro. I'll probably get a million views just because your beautiful face was at the very first thing that people saw, right? So, welcome to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas, gorgeous sunset, purpley smoky kind of mountains in the background, this rolling forest coming at us, this outcropping of rock. Is it going to fall off in, in a million years? Is it going to be there forever? Who knows? But you're obviously excited about painting this painting. So check the description down below. Find the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. Hey, welcome back. Today we have dark sienna, sap green, thalo green, prussian blue, the darker blues, alizarin crimson, midnight black, titanium white, cad yellow, and yellow ochre. And we're just gonna go crazy. You guys have already seen what it looks like. I'm literally about to make it up right now. And uh, I'll get to see what it looks like at the end, right? So I'm thinking sunset though. So let's go cad yellow, yellow ochre, same brush, nice and messy. And just pick a spot, Josh, why not? Up here, these crazy strokes like that. Gonna leave some of those streaks in there. Not all of them, but some of them. We'll leave some, we won't come down too far though because I wanna save a fair amount of white down in here. So don't come too far down with the yellows. Let's go up into the crimson. Both sides of the brush, get a lot of crimson on there. And let's come in from the top. Just kind of streak it down. Covering our edges, of course, right? We gotta cover the edges. Streak it down and then we'll blend that out. And let's take some of that dark blue, now that we got it on there, and just dump it in up here. A little bit of our black to really dull that dark blue down on the same angles though. Then we're going to take and blend it all together. Wash off this brush. If you've never seen how we wash the brush, got a nice gently used old cup in here. It has our, our low or odorless mineral spirits. That's what we use. Jasco or clean strip, whatever the other brand is. Go right into there, shake it off into a nearby trash can. And then into the old beater bucket. Looks a lot like this. I've got a, I kept having to throw away buckets, so I got a bag. Let's beat the devil out of that. I've got a bag that sits in mine and allows me to kind of save the bucket. And then the thing at the bottom is just an old golf ball basket. I had it in the garage when I first started painting. I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on different things, so that's what I grabbed. It's got a bunch of kind of crisscross surfaces that I can beat the brush on. It's just worked perfectly for me. So all about what you have. Use what you have. You really don't have to have anything special. You really don't. You know what we did miss a little bit though? Let's switch to a, a one inch brush. We'll put some more of that crimson back in here. Just so we have something back there, right? Just a little bit. Now we're gonna take and wash that brush off. Blah, 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 blah. I always just dab mine off a couple times on a paper towel. Let's see. Okay, we've got our clean, dry brush, dry-ish, right? We just washed it. So we're gonna start in our lightest area down here, kind of mixing some of that white up into the yellow, the yellow down into the white, back and forth with these crisscross strokes, and it'll just blend everything out nice and gentle for us, right? Staying away from that crimson. I don't wanna come in there yet. I'm gonna blend out the yellow area first so it's nice and soft. And with that liquid white that we have on the canvas, you can see the little dimples inside the glove. And that's the little dimples in the canvas right there. If you were just using your fingerprint, you should be able to see all the little ridges and cool little details of your fingerprint. And that's about just enough liquid white. You don't wanna to have too much. Definitely don't. Okay, now we're gonna come up, and we're gonna to start to take some of that crimson, drag it into some of the yellow, some of the yellow into the crimson, back and forth, back and forth. And you can do this as much as you'd like until it'll literally blend to where you can't even tell where the color starts and stops. Very, very soft and beautiful. And then we'll come up here into our last bit of dark, which is gonna wanna grow a little. That's why we leave that chunk of crimson in between the blue and the uh, yellow. That way it doesn't go green. Soft little thing. And then we can put like a little floater cloud off in the distance. Really nice. Three little bands. But for me, there's just not enough kind of crimsony color up here. It's not as dark and crimson as I'd like. So we're gonna add a little bit more in there and then we'll go blend it all out. Let's see, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little darker in some spots, not a dark in other spots. 
drag some of it back into that. A little bit more of that blue. And just kind of play with it until we like the way that it looks. All right, we're starting here with all that crimson. Look at all that beautiful crimsony color. Okay, and then once we come into our blue, I definitely don't want to go down into the yellow, right? That would be a bad idea. Look at that, nice and soft. Nice, soft little bit of colorful sky. Okay, we can even take a clean dry brush. Come back in here and just kind of go over those, make them nice and soft, so you really can't tell where that crimson starts, where the yellow stops. And just really have at it. You get this nice kind of progression of sky. It's really nice. Really nice. Yours looks amazing. I can see it already. Like when I look back at the camera, oh, I can see yours. It's fantastic. Fantastic. All right, now let's decide what we're going to do. What do we have on this brush? Oh, it's got that same kind of bluish purple stuff that we haven't even washed off yet. So let's just put some of that color down in here. Just very lightly though. A couple swipes back and forth. Use the brush that we haven't washed yet. <laughs> and just kind of smooth that over. That way if we put some snow down here, we'll have some reflections or maybe it's water or you could change your idea and go off in a whole nother direction. And you know, you want to start out with this giant mountain scene and then all of a sudden you've got this flat bit of seascape because you saw something and went with it. So that's how I like to, to paint around here. We kind of step back, we look at it, we go, huh, it might look cool if this was like that or that was like this or whatever. And then you kind of go from there. Let's see. All right, let's do it with a fan brush today. Take our old nasty size eight fan brush that we love to use. And I'm gonna think a lighter color for these lighter areas and then we'll go a darker shadow for these. I like to paint the shadows first. If you've never painted with me before, welcome to the channel. Now let's see, for our shadows down here, I wanna kinda use this pinkish color. So we'll get a little bit of the crimson. All right, we'll mix it up with a little bit of the yellow down here and kind of get this soft, shadowy color, right? Not real super dark. And then maybe we got some clouds that just live off in the back over here. Kind of like we're just writing in cursive, right? We don't really need to do anything. Maybe come down, leave a little bit of area for it to kind of grow into itself as we start to mix it. It just comes and floats off down there, All right? And you're like, Josh, what? That doesn't look like a cloud. I know, I know, right? One inch brush, we're gonna come back. We're gonna to start to mix it up. Look at that. Mix those two pieces together. That's why we leave room for them to touch. All right, if you really wanna get them in there, you push real hard. You'll grab that paint with our little circles and kind of mix them into themselves, okay? Now we're gonna to switch to the palette knife. We're gonna scrape up a little bit of the white, just really flatten it out down there, not really holding anything. Come grab a little bit of that kind of crimsony color we made. Mix it into this cool little bit of kind of pinkish, whitish color. Scrape some of that up and let's come in here and just dump it, right? Just let it all fall off the knife. Not trying to let it break, not trying to do anything, just trying to leave some areas thicker, some areas thinner, and then we'll see what it looks like. And we'll start to blend it out. And very lightly blend it because these, the white wants to mix with whatever color you put back there. So be very gentle with your mixing, otherwise it will mix completely away and then you'll have this kind of, you know, ordinary kind of shadowy color back there that's very similar to what you initially put down. So let those white colors kind of grow down until they reach those shadowy areas, right? Just blending, blending, blending. Now look, all of a sudden we got a little bit of shadow underneath right there. Looks really, really neat. Look at that. Take our two-inch brush. All this does is just flatten down the paint, right? We're not pushing very hard. Just kind of letting it drag across. Flattening it that way. You get this kind of glossy, far away little bit of cloud back there. Okay, we haven't washed the brush since we put this initial color down. In this case, I mean, you could go back in and add shadows to the bottom or shape it the way you wanted to shape it. But I like the way that one looks, so I'm not gonna change it. All we're gonna do is make the shadow a little bit darker. So we're gonna take a little bit of the crimson, a little bit of the blue. We're gonna mix them together on the brush, make that real purpley color. I wanna have more crimson than blue though. So it's this dark purple color. Ooh, it's lovely. It's lovely. Get it on both sides of the brush. Not super thick, right? I can still see through the brush even. It's not real thick. But there's a fair amount of paint on there. And then why don't we come in and we'll do another cloud like in a different direction. We got all of our, our, our sky kind of sloping. This guy's a little flat. 
So why don't we do one on this giant bit of slope down here, okay? Just like that, pushing hard into the canvas to, to let it stick on there. And I want it to come down, right? When we start to blend it, I want it to come down. So it needs to be thick enough that it's gonna grow on us. Okay, gonna go back to our old dirty brush. Push on this sucker and just watch it come, to, oh, look at this. And the less, you know, you don't want it all the same, of course. We wanna have our differences in color, but the less you play with it and the more little deep areas that you have, it just looks great. Oh, and then again, you can always go back over and cover what you don't like or something, you know, an area that you didn't like. Watch, we can even take what's left on the brush, come out here and just push that guy further back, this other cloud. All right, get a little bit more. All of a sudden we've come in and made a new little section of this cloud that's gonna come down at this different angle. And depending on how far we go, we could push that cloud all the way off in the distance. To which case, we'd lose the whole bottom of it, right? Because this is gonna grow outwards. So we're gonna lose the whole piece, but you gotta decide what you wanna do and just let it fly. Let it fly, dump it in, see what happens. Now we'll come back, we'll get our white. Let's see, let's mix it with a bit of crimson right here just to change up the color just a little bit. And that way it's not pure white, right? We're not using our purest white in the clouds. A little bit crimsony to start. And then we'll grab that up, kind of shape what we want these clouds to look like. Maybe there's a big bit over here. It comes down this way. Or there's a little farther, softer bit off in the distance, right? And then we can stop, change, go back to our brush. Start to mix it, bring it down, let it fall over those shadows like fog. Right, let it fall over the shadows. Pulling it down, go take your brush, do it the other way. Does not matter. The more and more you mix it, the softer and softer it's gonna become, which is what I want to happen on this one because now we're gonna have a, a brighter section in front, okay? Let's see. So we're gonna add a little bit more white to this already, you know, barely has any color into it. So it's very bright, but again, it's not pure white. And let's see, we'll come back in here, get our clouds rolling in the other direction. Right over there. Again, leaving areas for the white to grow into itself, okay? Gotta let it grow. There we go. Maybe a little bit more down there. We may lose, you know, a lot of this. Could literally go away. Let's see. Depending on where we put a mountain, or now we can change our idea, like I was talking about before, and do a whole different thing. Okay, I'm gonna very lightly mix this just so it's brighter against that white area, right? You gotta have a little bit of darkness in between the two. So it starts out very bright, gets darker, 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 bright, right? And then it'll dark, darker, darker, darker. Gotta have those differences. So over here, we're not mixing it you know, as hard, we're leaving it very soft, very soft. So that way the, the paint is still sort of thick in those brightest areas. It's not really going away anywhere. Come down here, see how we let those things mix together, but you don't want to over mix them. And we try not to cover all of our base color underneath. All right, so mix it up and it comes up there, goes over here, very lightly. You don't have to play around a whole lot. And again, Gotta have those differences. Don't wanna have the same white on top of the same white here. You gotta have that little line of dark in between. And it really looks great. You take it up as high as you want. Just remember, you gotta have those darknesses in there. So you go light, dark, light. Gotta have it. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, we're gonna take our brush again, very softly up from the bottom, straight to the top. And then we'll come to the side, very soft just kind of flattens down all that paint. Right, I think we did it on this guy. We're touching so softly that we're not even depositing any paint down here where we're, where we're starting. That's how soft you have to be. Very soft. I'm not trying to move the clouds, right? I'm just trying to kind of flatten the paint a little bit. That's all we're really doing. A little bright area right there. All we really need to do now, I like leaving this light area in here, so when we come in with our mountains, our little misty mountains, we're gonna have a lot of light area underneath to play with. Which should look sorta neat. And our sky looks really cool like that. Don't mind like even cooler. 
Let's take just a little bit of light on the fan brush. No dirty fan brush, doesn't matter. And come up here and just, just toss it off like that. And we'll have this very far away, soft little wisp of cloud off in the distance. Man, that looks good. But you don't want to do too many, right? That's the worry. How many do you do before all of a sudden it's too many? And then you can't go back, right? You've already stuck them to the canvas. Can't go back from there. All right, let's see what we want to do. Do I have any clean brushes available? There we go. Just trying to soften up the very base of that cloud right there. Just a little too thick for me. All right, so now let's do, we'll do some Smoky Mountains, right? I haven't done a tutorial on Smoky Mountains because I don't live really anywhere where there are Smoky Mountains. But, you know, I keep seeing pictures, I keep seeing people ask how you do the Smoky Mountains. So, you know, I'm gonna show you how I would do them. Really gotta use a lot of crimson in this first one with the blue and the black because we're against that yellow. I don't want it to go green. I mean, it really wouldn't matter because they're gonna be covered in trees. Anyway, but for the look that we're going for, we don't want it to go green just yet. If you, see, if you have green back here, then green and green and green and green is too much green. You don't have, you know, differences in color, right? You guys can't see it. It's at the very bottom of the shirt. <laughs> so we're gonna make this one very purpley, okay? You can even check to see what it looks like by adding in a bit of white to it, okay? So we have this kind of, this color right here, this kind of dark purplish color. It's not very blue. There's a lot of crimson inside, a little bit of black, so we don't have to worry. Now let's take that brush. We're gonna go through the dark bit, but just getting it on the very tip of the brush, okay? Because we just want it to be very small. And let's say we're gonna come in, let's see, from the side, maybe like a wave, right? With these little small little bits far off. And the reason that we're using just a fan brush to do that is because when we, we don't want it to grow very far, we're trying to get that paint to stay up there and then fog underneath. Okay, so we're not trying to get it to grow anywhere just yet. Now let's wash these brushes off and then we'll get to it. Okay, now in order to make our foothills look like there's gonna be a lot of them and they show a lot of depth, we need to create a bunch of fog beneath this one. And the way that we're gonna do that is take our clean dry brush Dab that sucker off, and we have to just tap at it and just bring it down. Tap at it from the top, bring it down. You get this far away bit of mist at the bottom, right? Because there's not a lot of paint there to begin with. And the way that you really do mist is you, you really don't paint it. So all we're doing is just kind of tapping, dragging it down, right? Whatever's underneath here, just that smallest little bit that's going to be enough fog to create a next little foothill, right? We can take these just very lightly straight up at the top. And all of those just have far away trees now at the very top. The more and more we mess with it, the more lighter the fog will become. So it depends on what you're looking for, right? You don't really want to have a whole lot of paint. Remember, can't cover it, can't keep adding thick, 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 thick. So we have to add thick make it light, add another layer of thick, make it light, add another layer of thick, make it light again, okay? You guys got it. We're trying not to cover everything. I do think there would be a little bit of darkness in that area right there, right? If all the sun is behind it, man, even just like that, those that extra little bit right there, that's amazing. That's and another piece of detail that wasn't there before. Right? And if you don't overdo it and you, you catch that and you go, ooh, right? Someone's gonna see that later and go, holy crap, that's my favorite part. You know what I mean? So let's come in again. We haven't gotten any new paint on the brush. Still very much the same stuff that we had before. And let's change our next little foothill. Maybe we come down in here into the mist a little bit, right? But not a lot, just a little. Just a little bit of mist back there. Just gives it a little bit of depth, right? And I don't like it to be all the same all the time. So it's never like that in my mind. And just showing the smallest little bit of mist back there will, will create a little bit more distance than having too much. When you have a big gap in between, you're gonna have way too much mist going on. There we go, pull that out. Now, when we come in with our, come in with our two inch brush, it'll give us stuff to 
flatten out, right? And then by making it soft and tapping at it and bringing it down, tapping and bringing it down. You could do the same thing with your brush this way, but I find it makes it too big. So all we need is the smallest little bit of, of that smokiness at the bottom, right? That's all we need. A little bit of smokiness. Just a little difference. Something that's not yellow, that's not the same. There's that little bit of something in there. And because we're, very, we're using the smallest amount of paint and trying not to cover all the yellow, we're trying to save some of that, right? Creates that great distance, especially if our hills look like, you know, they're getting taller and taller or closer and closer, right? That one was further away. This next one's starting a little bit higher. Now we can go lower with the next one, maybe come in higher than that with the next one after that. All sorts of stuff. Okay, see if we can do the same thing with our brush, just lifting very, very, very lightly. See if we can't get the indication of some sort of tree or something growing at the tops of these little hills. That looks fantastic. Fantastic. Again, depending on how many little foothills you want, you gotta decide how, you know, how much fawn do you want? How much of this? How much of that? Again, I've never painted little smoky mountains like this before. So just sort of figuring it out. Same as you guys. Going to add a little bit of black just to make this next one just a little bit closer. But I don't want it to be so black that it's completely different in color, right? So we're going to mix it back in with that one. And let's see. Maybe this guy comes from up above over here. So we can tell his horizon line is different into that fog and off to this side. Maybe it goes up. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows, guys? We're gonna paint it and then we're gonna step back and look at it and see what it looks like. Change it over here. Do something like that. Go back to our same old brush. All we're really doing is just dabbing it on a paper towel to get the other color off. And then we're gonna come in and just tap it into our little foothills. Tap, tap, tap. Bring in some of that darker color down. Kind of moving it how we would think the hill might sit, right? So over here, maybe it comes down this way. And then some of the times you'll have these little differences, little stuff. Little things start happening. All right? maybe this guy starts up here. He's like, fill me in, dude. Starts up here, maybe it comes down in front of those guys. And just because we left that little bit of distance back there, you could change and put a whole nother thing do all sorts of stuff. You need to just decide where you want your, you know, your little mountains to stop. Again, a little bit of pressure at the very top, just kind of dragging those guys up. This turned out to be really, really neat. It's kind of fun when you do something that you know, you know, you don't normally do. Ooh, even that looks nice. Like, wait, now we have this hill. I might just change my whole idea because we have this hill that's starting to grow over here. And then what, what's happening over here? Maybe there's a, a something, I don't know, right? But it's starting to happen just right in front of our eyes just because we're bouncing the brush in certain ways, turning it up this way, going over here. You can start to see things happening. Can you see? Because I can see it. Man, that's like where the sun is. It's really bright right there. Very cool. Very, very cool. That's why all these things are so dark. They're like little silhouettes. Man, that looks really neat. I might just change my whole idea. I mean, I say I do that all the time for you guys, because you should. You should change up your idea all the time. See what happens. But I literally might change up my whole plan just based off how this one's starting to look already. It looks fantastic. My goodness. The other plan was to come in with this row of trees over here, like a forest. And if that's the case, we need something over here. So let's put like another little bit, right? Just a littlest bit of paint though, because we're gonna come back in and try to make it grow by tapping it, right? It's spreading itself out every time we tap it. All right, we just pushed a whole nother hill and now we've connected these two and now there's a little bit of distance back inside there. All from just playing around, right? That's what we're doing, that's what I'm doing. I don't know what you guys are doing. I'm just playing around and you guys like how we play and uh, like how we paint around here because you you keep coming back to the channel. And I want to thank you for that, for uh, supporting our channel 
it's it really means the world to me when I see you guys try one of my paintings or or you know just the sky section or just the wave or just that I'm having so much fun with you guys on Sunday seascapes which is tomorrow it's actually Saturday for me Saturday night at 8:23 party right what does Josh do what does Josh do what's his night his nightlife like oh yeah well Saturday nights he uh, paints until you know 10 o'clock. And then he goes to bed and then he wakes up the next morning and paints for you guys live on Sunday Seascapes. It's fantastic. There we go. All right. I think we're going to stop right there with those little hills. So get your hills done, right? Very lightly done. I mean, shoot, we could continue this whole thing full of hills. But that would kind of ruin the idea that I had initially. So. There is your tutorial on Smoky Mountains. If you were just watching to see how to do Smoky Mountains, there you go. Tutorial done. This guy looks like he just needs a little bit darker on the top of his hill. Right? Doesn't it look like that? Just needs a little bit. So we gotta be very careful when we work our way backwards to make sure that we don't cover up too much of the fog or cover up, you know, too much of our forest beneath. But it just seemed like he needed a little bit of help back there. And this guy would help if he was straight. There we go. See what happens when you make it up? When you literally make it up as you go, that's what happens. Let's see, darken this area up because he looked a little bit lonely, a little bit too much fog over there. Got our edges we can finish later. I really like how this guy comes in front and kind of connects with that other hill. There we go. It's really kind of neat to me how it does that. Just making it nice and soft, just by tapping it. Tap, 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 tap. And you can see the more you tap, the more you can bring all sorts of stuff, you know, right up to your front door. We could put a little pond right here. We can do all sorts of stuff. Man, it's starting to look good. No matter where we go, it's gonna be good. That's my prediction, all right? A couple little soft little strokes. Give ourselves that mistiness back there. Take away too much detail from that little hill. I like that guy. Just kind of, I mean, we could throw snow onto this. We could do all sorts, but we've, we've given the indication that we have these very far away pine trees off in the distance, right? Very far. So we can't just all of a sudden, you know, put a, a small little fence right here. That's not going to make sense. It's going to look like grass. So we've given the indication of some pine trees. We better put some more in there. Now we're going to go back to that same color. Add a little bit of black, a little bit of blue maybe. Now that we're out of the yellow section, I don't have to worry about things turning blue down here, even if I want them to, right? Or want them to turn green. Sorry, not blue, green. We're gonna take a bit of green, speaking of. Bring it down in here, just so we get a little bit of green hue to our kind of closer up trees. Closer up a little bit of forest, right? Let's say they come over here, why not? Let's start them down here. We're gonna stay into the foggy area, right? Foggy area back here. This creates distance with these trees. If they're nice and dark, and we get that bit of distance back there, okay? In the areas where it's not so thick, like over here, it's a little bit thicker. Back there, it's a little bit thicker. Right here, it's not so thick, so we can come up into these a little bit. That is not a lot of green in my bit of forest, let me tell you. There we go, a little bit of green in there. A straight up sap green. I don't come up in here, but I can't go all green all the way. You gotta have some dark shadow behind it. You see the difference? You really get a lot of that depth with those dark shadows in there. So we're gonna get a bunch of paint, black, blue, crimson right there on the brush. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And we're gonna come all the way to the edge down here. Continue on. Right, on this downward kind of slope by tapping it in. That's all we're really doing. Gonna go back and steal some more of that straight up green. Get it on all sides. And then we're gonna come back in here on the top. It's just gonna add those little bit of differences, those little greens, those little nice little hues that are happening in there. Okay, we're gonna come back to our two inch brush, start at the bottom, swipe up to the top. See how it flattens it? Kind of makes it harder to see through. Makes these trees much closer. Flattening it, we're giving it these real pointy tip top edges of these trees, right? These are not textured trees. We don't want texture here. We want them to be nice and soft so we can continue to add layers. 
Speaking of which, we need to create some fog. That's a lot of paint on that brush. Why don't we clean this brush off? All right, clean it off, dab it off on a paper towel. Get back to it. All right, now, okay, we're gonna dab it in. Bringing the color down, right? We can eventually use this color somewhere. We're gonna bring it all down. Pop, 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 pop. See, we're going almost all the way to the tip top of the trees. Bring in all that color down here. That's why we don't even have to paint the bottom of the canvas. You could literally do this. Maybe put another section of forest in right here, call it a day. It'd be your whole painting. Be done. Be amazing. All right? Really don't want to disturb it too much. We're just going to swipe that up too. I kind of like those little differences in there. And again, you could change what your idea was and totally do something else. You really can. Right? Go across. Remember, we, we blended all that down so there's not a whole lot of thick paint. Up here, it's sort of thick. So if I swiped across there, it's going to smear that whole thing. But down here where we tapped it, we, we got it nice and soft. Nice and thin. Got it thinned out. Look at all those different colors in there. Man, I don't even want to cover those up. That's one of my favorite parts. All right, let's see. Why don't we give these guys, at least one of these guys, a little shape. This big, thick sucker right here, he's just bothering me. So I'm going to get on my micro fan brush. You guys can find these in my Amazon storefront, uh, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, right? Because that's what we paint around here. Happy little landscapes is what we used to be. Kind of like Bob's happy trees, right? Okay, we use these micro fan brushes because they're much smaller. It's much smaller than the than the size eight that we, that we had to make all these shapes with, right? And that way we can get tiny, tiny little details that would be hard to get with that bigger brush. Right, push up, get all these cool little things happening on our tree. Cool little details, just makes you know, okay, oh, all the rest of those are evergreen trees because that's what that is. I can tell, I can totally tell. Right, tap the base of that guy down, bring it away from itself so it blends in with the rest of those other guys. Right, blends it in. So you step back and you look and you go, hmm, that looks pretty good. I like that. And again, a lot of this stuff is in the uh, the silhouette mode because all of our light is, is back there. So we're not going to see everything, right? If you looked at a, at, a, at a photo of this, you wouldn't see every single branch or every single trunk of every single tree. You wouldn't see a lot of that stuff. Speaking of the trunk of the tree, let's get a little bit of white and brown and we can make that up real quick. Right? Maybe there's the smallest little bit. That's even too bright. I always use too much white when I'm doing my brown with my tree trunks. Right? Maybe just the smallest little bit of brown in there. It's all you really need. It's just not going to see the whole thing. I don't want to have the whole thing exposed. You can even go back with your little fan brush and maybe in the middle, just kind of make it soft so it splits it up a little bit. Now you got two pieces of bark right there. Really turns out good. All right, let's see what we're going to do. Let's scrape up all this mess up here again. That green, the brown, crimson, black, blue, all that together, right? We're gonna need a whole big bunch to create some big trees over here on the side. Whole big bunch. Smash it out, squish it out, make it all flat. You don't wanna have different colors on your brush when you go up to do it. You kinda want one uniform color. Gonna go back to that old nasty fan brush, size eight, the big one. Eight, 10, those are good sizes for me, right? Very lightly dragging it through the paint so that it globs onto the brush, right? Look at all these, look at all that texture in there. That's what I wanna leave on the canvas, okay? So we're very lightly dragging through our thick paint. That way we get this nice ax blade kind of look to it. It's all nasty and gross. And if it came at your head, ah, like a zombie movie. <laughs> But Josh has lost it. He's lost his mind, and that's it. There is no more Josh. All right, before we do that, though, before we go completely crazy, let's get a little bit of white on our half round brush. We're going to come into there so it's not as dark, right? And not as thick. We don't need it to be as thick. We're bouncing it hard, spreading it out across the whole thing. And then maybe here there's a couple of, like, I don't know, little softer bits of trees that sit up here in the front. Got to cover all of that green stuff behind, okay? Now we're going to go back into the darker section of the paint. 
drag that down, kind of mix it in with that lighter area. So we can continue down here. Maybe there was a little bit of shadow, and that's a little darker down here. All right, throw some of those darker bits up there if you want. Come up, get a little bit more of the dark. You can do anything you want, right? Don't want to have it so super thick up here, though. This is just a little bit of background foliage, some bush, some stuff back behind our little bits of trees that we're about to do. On the same, everything's on this same angle that we're going down, like we're going down this hill. Again, we don't want to have too much. <clears throat> so we can take our two inch brush and again, with the very top corner, just kind of tap it, make it softer. Make it look how you want. And little bits that come out of the tree or little darker areas or lighter areas, drag it down. That's going to make it easier for us to put our, our thick, uh, our, our lighter colored highlights and stuff on. I want to have all the thickness everywhere. Maybe as we get to the very bottom, yes, but if you want to continue to add layer upon layer upon layer, it has to become a lighter bit than what's right here on the palette. You can't go thick on thick on thick on thick on thick. It just doesn't work. Okay, again, we're really not doing much to the bottom here. Just letting it, whatever happens, happens. And we're trying to use a light enough amount of paint that it doesn't cover us all the way to the bottom. Now, let's see, what if there was, I mean, we could do it with a liner brush, but just because I have this in my hand, we could do like a trunk of a tree in here. Go over there, over there, little branches, little stuff, little things happening. Maybe there's something that went off that way, or over here, or there. Just all sorts of places. Everywhere. Every which where. Looks like a flower. Okay, I'm going to come in, we're going to wash that brush, our half round brush. I call it the bush making brush, right? Because that's what we normally do is make a lot of bushes with it. Now let's create like a really col a really pretty color green with that cad yellow and our phthalo green. And I guess we'll put it right here. They mix together into this beautiful green. Just, it's fantastic. Especially if you throw a little bit of white in there. Brightens it up. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's, I don't, it's my favorite color. Now we're going to take a little bit of liquid white on the end of our brush. Dab it into that color, just make it a little bit thin, right? Not gonna have a whole lot. I don't need a whole lot. And then we're gonna come up above where our, our little bit of tree line is, our shadow. You gotta come up above it a little bit. <clears throat> Can't just be shadow at the top. A little bit more liquid white, a little bit more of the green. Come in here, maybe we decide there's a little bit of tree branch or it covers over here or down there. We're not covering everything, right? That initial shadow may be so far away that we can't even see it. That tree that's that's causing that shadow may be literally off the block, right? But you don't have to cover everything. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful little thing. Let's throw some of that. We'll get a little bit of the liquid white, come into our yellow, let it mix with whatever green we have, right? Just to make it nice and light, nice and thin. And maybe over the tops of our guy here, Got a little bit, but I don't want it to be all the same. Let it kind of mix in with that stuff. You got to leave some dark areas, leave some lighter areas. Let's wipe that off. Don't have to clean it, just wipe it. Let's see, come back. A little bit more liquid white. Into that green again. Tap, tap, tap. Let's say we'll put some over here. Bam, bam, bam. Just kind of letting whatever wants to stick, stick. It's not really the focal point of our of our trees, right? They're just kind of little bits, little things. Maybe you can't even see the bottom of the stuff that's happening down there. Just little different things. Little differences, guys. Small little things, right? That's all we gotta do. A little bit more of the green, a little bit of the yellow, just to change it. If we mix it together, just change it up, right? What if there's some stuff happening over here? Just little things happening. Little bits going on all over the place. Just very lightly tapping it. And if you never did, if you didn't like anything, you could always mix it up. You could do all sorts of stuff. You come in with your fog, different heights, right? So maybe we came up into that bush, came down around here. Maybe we'll go up again, just very lightly tapping those just so they don't go away. I don't want them to go away. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like a little bit of fogginess. Who knows what's happening down here? I don't even know. No one knows. Josh doesn't know that no one knows, right? Man, that's going to be nice right there. That is going to be nice, guys. Okay, 
Remember we went back and we loaded up this brush and we tried not to get it onto our pants or our shirt or our apron or whatever you're wearing, right? We came back, loaded it up. Now let's do, who knows? Let's do a, uh, let's do a little guy over here. Yeah, yeah, no. In between, over here, 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 here. Or we get it two. Make a decision, Joshy. Because I want to do more than one. But maybe this one is just going to be just good enough. Let's see. Right? Little patented Josh tree right here, coming up. Now, just because I want it to be very sharp, I'm going to go back in just so I get the, that nice edge again. Like that, right? Get the gross edge. And then we're going to come to the side. My brush is not straight like this. It is tilted this way. Okay? And then we're going to push up in this motion. Right? We're not making the saggy trees with it tilted this way or Bob does and it sags down. Those are sad. I like uplifting trees, right? So ours is tilted upwards. And that way, when we come in against the canvas, it's going to touch, 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 touch. And the more we touch against those bristles, the bigger they're going to become. So facing at this downward thing, going to push it against the canvas. We're going to try to go slow, okay? First one, just very lightly, couple taps. Okay, ooh, all right. Now we'll drop down like a quarter inch. Push a little bit harder. Okay, so I, I can see it, it's coming together, right? The more we go down, the more we push, the more we skip. And now all of a sudden by here, we're using the full amount of the brush, okay? Versus up here, as we were pushing in on the corner, we were just kind of squeezing it down and using a small amount, okay? Now we're gonna flip it over because this side really hasn't been touched yet. Get this nice dark, kind of covering everything behind it. That's why we do all these little highlights and stuff first. You never know where it's gonna kind of end up. And you want it to be thick. You wanna be able to look against the side and see all the thickness kind of sticking off, all the little fingers reaching out. Okay, we're gonna clean off our little micro brush. Get that out of the way. Now we can come in and get a little bit of our liquid white. Not too much, not trying to fill the whole brush. I'm gonna come in here very lightly, very lightly. A couple bits on each side. You can see we've only gone up about that high off of the, the white, right, on each side, but the, the brush is still filled with white. It's, it's chock full, so it's very wet, okay? And as you can see, as we touch, now the green has climbed up that area. Don't want it to be too green. I don't want it to be too stinking wet either. It's a, it's a very fine line. Okay, we're gonna come up here, very first one, pop. Gonna push against the top, actually. Since this one's close enough, let's throw some of that tree bark that we had in there, right, at different spots. And as you get down, it would become thicker in my mind, right? Not all of it is gonna show, so you don't have to worry. And if you get a little bit of white area, just go back over it again. Sometimes it doesn't mix all the way through or I'm doing it, doing it too fast. All right, so we touched our, so we got a little straight bit right at the top, and then we're gonna come in and just so lightly touch on the areas where our shadows are and not try to cover them all, right? We don't want to cover everything. Now here, just kind of touching. And the more and more we touch, the more the black is going to climb up the brush, right? If all that thick paint wants to get attached to this brush. And we're just giving it the smallest little amounts. And then we're taking it away because we don't want the whole tree covered in, in this bright green. And we don't want our whole brush covered in all that dark color either, right? So just going by very lightly, touch, touch, touch. And by the time you get done, your brush is gonna be pretty dark. So you have to clean that off or wipe it off and then come back and reload. And with these cool little micro brushes, they give you these neat little single bow or branch little details. Cool little things that really don't happen when, you, when I use the bigger brush anyway. Right? And they don't have to look the same. It doesn't, each side doesn't have to be equal, but for some reason I thought right there needed a little bit of extra bit. So you can tell by putting our tree trunk in and not caring where it is and just going over it, a lot of it became hidden and uh, it looks great. It really does. It's fantastic. Okay, got a big old glob of paint on my brush. So what happens when I end up using too many brushes to make like little stuff like this that we don't normally do. Then I have too much stuff in the way and I'm getting paint everywhere. Wonder why I wear gloves, right? Yeah, I wonder, Josh. Okay, let's go back in. We still have a bunch of that paint, so let's get it on our brush nice and 
we're pulling very lightly through so we can get the maximum amount of it to stick on the brush. And right? again, if we tapped it, look at all that texture bit, all those little different things, those little fingers that are reaching out, right? Okay, let's come in with another guy and we'll put him over here, a little bit taller, kind of hiding that tree, hiding a couple of these bushes, sitting down here with his buddy, okay? Again, turning to the side, very lightly touching. And then the more and more we go, the more we kind of turn the brush, the handle starts to turn, starts really kind of shaping these branches like it wants. And again, you don't have to just try it and go to the bottom of your tree. Scrape up the rest of that paint again. Really load it on there. Get it nice and thick. You want every every branch to have a little finger growing off of it. All right? And then you'll have, when you come in with your highlight paint, you'll have a place to stick to all of that. Because all that thick paint is going to want that very thin paint. So it's gonna, you're going to have tons of little places, little arms, little shadows, even in itself that will... You know, kind of fill in with the rest of that stuff. Again, this is why we create that that sh that kind of fog back there, because you get all these cool little misty details without even having to do anything, guys. I'm telling you. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna get our liquid white back on our little brush. Come back in. Maybe put a little bit more yellow into this guy. All right, just a little bit. Changes it. Differences in what, guys? Oh, color. That's right. And again, we almost forgot the tree trunk. Almost forgot the trunk. So let's come down here. You can almost still see that dark line. And that's where we'll put it. All right? It doesn't have to be everywhere, but sort of where it's exposed. I would expect to see a little bit of trunk color. Now we're going to come in just at the top. Vertical. very So we get that very bright green bit at the top. And then very lightly. You can even see how the canvas doesn't even bounce as much as when I'm pushing with the darker brush. All right? You don't need it to bounce like crazy. If it's bouncing too hard, you may be pushing too hard and you're creating the mud that way. And that's how you make mud. You come in, you've already pushed, you've created the tree, okay? And then when you're coming back in with your highlights, you're pushing with that same amount of pressure and mixing in this thin paint with all that thick paint. And it's just not gonna work. And again, the more that you come down and you push, sometimes you're gonna run out. It's going to fill up with that dark color. So we're going to go back into the liquid white, back into our color that we were using, maybe a little bit more yellow, right? That's what we said, a little bit more yellow on this one. Okay, I don't want to have too much of the same color yellow there, so I'm going to kind of skip that area, maybe put a branch out over here, over there, coming up. The harder we push, the more kind of rounded branch that's going to look like. And then a lot of times I'll go back in and kind of flatten them out a little bit. Turn our brush over, go back in again, get those little branches in there, and down around the bottom, it really doesn't have to be as bright as it is at the top. <clears throat> I like how we retain that one little dark area with this little bit of green and yellow branch to it. It's kind of neat. Okay, let's take the bottom of this, and we're gonna pull out to the side, okay? And in my mind, we're gonna pull out and then there's gonna be a cliff right there. And drop off the edge of a cliff. All right, so this guy, maybe that could be our cliff line right there. This whole thing could be like an outcropping. Could be whatever we want it to be. Just kind of bring it out to the edge of our imaginary cliff, right? Looks really neat. Like I said, I never know what these are gonna look like until we get done. You guys are like, oh, you're just Josh. And no, I swear I had no idea. I mean, I knew I wanted to have like a little cliff or something, but I didn't know it was going to look like that. I'm going to come in here. We're going to scrape a couple sticks and twigs into this guy in the front, just so somebody can see him when they're really looking close. And all we're doing is just scraping away the paint, leaving an area of white underneath. That's really it. There we go. And we could throw some grass in here. We could do another bush in the front. We could do all sorts of stuff, but I really like the idea of having this cliff face right here. So all of this stuff needs to be very dark. So why don't we take our black, just straight up black or the Bob's Mountain mixture, whatever one you're using, all right? And we'll just make it dark. I had to 
cover up all that same little bit there. I'm doing it on this upward angle because I want to give it this rounded kind of feel. So this guy out here, you get this rounded look to it, right? Like that. Then we can come down, we're going to highlight different areas and do different things. It's going to come out to the edge, go straight down. So all that needs to be dark. Get our dark color in there. Man, it's really neat. Love all this fog down here. You could do a whole nother bit of forest. You could do anything but that fog. I mean, I don't know. We could make it, you could continue that on. You could do less, do all sorts of stuff. Oh, I kind of like that. And this rounded curve to it makes it really cool. It's really cool. All right, let's see if all of our sun is back here. Let's just dab in some grass, some shadowy grass with that same dark color. Kind of working it. And that'll be our shadowy grass. Okay. A little bit of liquid white, little as bit though. You don't need a whole lot. Really don't. Get some more of that, those two green colors. Kind of dab them in. And then let's say we'll come back just very lightly touching, right? Kind of just dropping the color on really. And then we're gonna go back and go over it so many times until it ends up looking like the grassy color that I want. We could even have something kind of drape over the top. Really cool. It's actually not bad at all, just like that. I mean, all we're looking for is just little differences in color. And then we can take our, our shadows of our tree, right? Which are different sizes, of course. Kind of swipe down, just like we would make a reflection of them, but we're in the grass, you know what I mean? So we have just that color in there. And then we can kind of shape it however we want. Go back in, add different, different little bits, little color, a little bit of yellow. Maybe there's some yellow in between. There is some yellow out here. Little things. Come back in, tap it until it looks right. I like that, that looks neat. That looks neat, guys. But we cover over too much of the shadow. Too much of shadow covering. Okay. There we go, little things. Little stuff happening. Little swipes up every so often. The effect of grass, it's kind of neat. But I think we're gonna have to come a little bit further over with this guy. Ooh, we could even turn it like that. That looks cool. It's like a little octagon almost. All right, that looks neat. Straight down though from the bottom, uh, from the top. There we go. It's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. I kind of like it. I just don't want the uh, the roundness to be too round, right? We're not looking at it from above, so we can't really see a whole lot of the grass if we're kind of on the eye line, on the eye level with it. So we really wouldn't be able to see a whole lot of grass from the above section in my mind. A little bit more black. See, we'll just change it. It looks like pillars, like columns. It's kind of cool. We're not in ancient Rome, though. We're on some crazy mountaintop thing. Now, all I'm doing is pulling this down. Even though there's a whole lot of paint here, we're still making it softer because we're pulling it down. And that way we can come back in with some texture. Really make it look cool. Really. Do a whole other bush right there, just with one little touch. Kind of looks neat though, like we're going off into something. Makes it look cool to me. Just a little yellow ochre. So, so we get a little bit of differences in color, right? A little bit 
a little different. Something a bit different. Shoot, we could even put bushes on the top of that or a whole nother section in there like we did with that other one, like a walkway. But no, I like it like that. Okay. Let's see, you guys. No, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We could do a, a few more trees down in here, I guess. Just so lightly, though. Because I don't want those colors to be the same. I don't want to have too much down there. Right, just fog it up. Easy way to kind of fill something in that we don't like, right? Okay. I'm going to take a bit of brown and white. The small bit of white, though. Don't need a whole lot. Mix that up over here, and then we're going to take a bit of brown and black and mix that up down here. You can see the difference in color there. Take a little bit of yellow ochre. We can throw it in with that brown. Kind of makes it look really neat. Okay, we're going to scrape up a little bit, a little roll. And come over here to our edge, kind of pull down. Just straight down. Try not to hit our easel. Right? Let's see. And again, if you don't mix it well enough, you'll get those little areas of white that kind of like to show up. So very simply, you can go right back over the top. We're touching it so lightly because we really don't want a lot of, you know, pressure on there. That's the way to get your paint to break. Not having a lot of pressure. Pressure is not going to work. Taking a little bit of the dark, going back over that top of that same area. Right, very small amounts, and that way, whatever the canvas wants, it's going to take. And the more and more you pull down, the more you're going to kind of lose all of those things. So kind of decide what you want it to look like, and go from there. Right over here, maybe it's a, a little bit darker. We can't, the sun can't reach this far, but we want it to have the same amount of texture as the other side. So you have to add that dark color in there. Kind of let them mix together, kind of overflow back and forth until it looks like it's a blended thing. See, darker, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Oh, all right, the light might be reaching around. A little bit of black and then just kind of go over it until it looks right. Look at that. It looks almost like it's being held up by wood planks or something. It's kind of neat. And not a lot. Don't need a whole lot. If you can get just the smallest amount of black to break off of there in different places, it's going to look wicked, you guys. Gonna look wicked. Just like that. Man, that's pretty cool. Well, right on. Right on. Donkey Kong. Let's finish the sides over here. Get that. All we do is put the yellow, get a little bit of our crimson. That was about there. Just kind of mix it. I'm sure you can see over my head. There we go. Throw our little bluish blackish up here. And poof, side of the canvas done. Looks amazing. This side's already done to the top. And then I think we're going to call this one, you guys. It looks freaking awesome. It really does. Why don't we take our, our little liner brush, come over here. You can throw our initials in down here into this thick bit of paint with our liquid white. That's how I like signing. I get sick of mixing so many colors so long. And I'm like, oh, I'll just sign it in white. Like, does it really matter? Does it really matter? No one's buying them anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you to anyone who has ever supported my store or my, you know, Amazon shop or liked my Facebook page or even watched a YouTube video. Thank you guys for really watching. It It, it <laughs> really warms my heart. It seriously does. That you guys want to spend that much time hanging out with me. It just blows my mind sometimes. I'm not even kidding. Not even joking. There we go. Man, that looks really neat, guys. It's like just standing right out here, saying hello. Get a little bit darker shadow inside this guy, though. And it's got to have those differences. Can't all be that yellow color. So you got to have little things happening. See, it even looks cooler now. Even looks cooler. 
And that way, in all those little dark areas is where you can put your little sticks and stuff that are holding everything up. Really like this one. A couple at the base of the trees, growing off. They're like, hey, what's up? Maybe there's one way over there. It's like, Shh, a little bit of something kind of growing out. I like it. You can do all sorts. We can put a little tiny guy in here. Let's do that. Just a little guy. He's like, little baby pine tree. All right, see how we keep the brush turned to the side? Just so he can have his little, his little branches, right? Doesn't want to grow too big. Come back, liquid white, into our kind of tree color pile. And then we'll come back in and throw some, just again, very lightly touching, not covering everything. You don't need to cover it all. You gotta have shadows, you gotta have depth in there. All right, and again, don't try to force it like me. <laughs> just let it go. If it doesn't wanna be in there, it's not gonna be in there. There we go. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Bam, just like that. All right, if you're a fan of mine, you might be yelling at your TV screen or laptop or phone or iPad or however you're watching me. Like, where are the birds, right? And if you're not, if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, uh, I sign my, oh no, guys, London took my yardstick. No! Okay, that's okay. Uh, I sign my paintings with my little JK down here and then I put my family into each and every painting that I do. And uh, I do that in the form of these little birds, so. Let me put them off up here, right? You got me, then you have my wife, and our daughter, Bailey. Sort of in that orientation, it's kind of like Orion's belt, and uh, that's our family. That's the only way we get to travel around and see all these beautiful places, is uh, right there, flying through your scene. So, thank you for watching the video. I have a mountain of brushes to go clean up, and uh, it was a good long video, so very, you know, very happy with how it turned out. It was fantastic. I hope yours looks half as good and you'll be, you know, ex over the moon excited. So uh, until the next time I see you, you guys take care and uh, have the rest of a good day. Bye -bye.